Hallo uh, to all again. Um, nice to see you tonight. Uh, I'm uh, Geert. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome you. Um, to, as well as ask you kindly if you would like to switch off your uh, microphone, as that may give some interference in the talking. Um, if you feel like you can you know, write uh, down your name uh, and where you're from in the chat box. And as well, if, when and how you have communicated or interacted with the plant. Um, then um, I would like to introduce Simona Vermeere on this last uh, talk of uh, Soundwalk September, at least in the curated uh, program. It is um, um, our last uh, event of uh, the month. It was an Odyssea trajectory through uh, more than 50 events with uh, and 12 uh, incredible uh, rich talks and panels uh, throughout the last weeks of which and it's uh, wonderful to see how many of you came to various of them and are back today to this concluding um, uh, talk. Uh, Soundwalk September Walkless and Create uh, is coordinated uh, by uh, Babak, uh, Andrew and myself. Babak and Andrew are here as well. And uh, we would like to we have a confidential conversation tonight about uh, walking and plants. Uh, Simone Evermere, um, who will talk now, she holds a PhD in cooperative literature from the University of Minho, Portugal, and is a postdoc researcher in the ontology of plants, in the critical plant studies. She also holds an MA in image studies from the University of Bucharest. Her fields of research interest are the connection between literature, arts, and science relating to the Spaziergangwissenschaft, or the very difficult world for the science of walking or promenadology, and the concept of consilience um, by Edward Wilson. The unification of science and humanities, as was introduced by him. She co curated Made of Walking in Delphi in Greece. And in Akamas, Cyprus, the latter was built on her concept plant escape, how to relate plants, literature, and walking. And she was as well a member of the scientific committee of the joint Made of Walking, Walking and Arts Encounters conference in Prespes uh, last year. Other projects based on her research were realized at the Saramago Foundation in Lisbon, at the Queen's Museum of Art in New York, at the National Library at the National Museum of Brasilia, at the Serbian Academy of Science and Arts in Belgrade and at the Analogia Festival in Athens. And now uh, for Soundwalk September. Simona will share with you a text uh, that she will uh, read to you. And I will share with you the text so you can follow um, while she's reading. I'm sharing it now in the uh, chat. Uh, there you find a link, and if you click on that, you um, will have the text open that you can follow in your own rhythm, uh, listening to the voice uh, to Simona, after which we open the discussion, the floor with all of you. Uh, this is a cafe where you are uh, very welcome to talk and intervene uh, after the uh, presentation of Simona uh, on any way you like, and we hope that it will not be only a conversation between me, Simona, um, and uh, you, but also between yourselves. We would love to hear about your practices, your ideas, your visions uh, related to uh, the topic of tonight. You are free to come and to go whenever you want. Um, so the cafe will last till the last man or woman is standing. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, you may not have ever have to go home. The last uh, drop of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so um, enjoy uh, Simona's um, uh, presentation. Hello, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm uh, very happy to begin uh, to start uh, uh, my presentation with uh, uh, outside of academic field, finally. <laughs> and. Um, uh, tonight, here to introduce my work uh, 
with a lot of labels, uh, very, how to say, sophisticated names. And uh, But in fact, uh, my approach is very easy um, <laughs> because uh, I, extract, I, extract, I extracted all my ideas from literature. Uh, uh, have, uh, having this um, background, visionary background of, uh, of uh, artistic uh, workers. So um, my my presentation is about plant escape because um, uh, I think it's the most soft uh, approach uh, of of the plants is to walking with the plants and not on the plants or near the plants or uh, outside of uh, of their uh, ontological field. Uh, he spoke about um, about uh, consilience, uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, approach of William, um, uh, what is that? William Wilson? Yes, yeah, sorry uh, about Wilson. Uh, that um, uh, he, he can't see anymore the future of um, of the human uh, knowledge without um, making a bridge between humanities and uh, um, sciences. Uh, but for me, for my uh, approach, I want to introduce. Um, more than humanities, which I, 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 I see that the best way to, uh, to make the, your, um, the field between these uh, three uh, perspectives, uh, the, third, uh, the third one, it, it will be the artistic field. So it will be uh, not a consilience, but an escape uh, through, through art. Um, so this is my... Uh, uh, my first introduction uh, about um, about my text. I will uh, make um, a little uh, explanation about the uh, new um, topics uh, in uh, critical plant studies, and uh, then I will apply um, my personal vision on uh, on working with with plants, which is a plant escape. <laughs> uh, after we'll uh, find the definition together of uh, this. Um, uh, Movalis uh, plant escape, I hope, uh, after our uh, dialogue. Now I will uh, proceed uh, to, to the reading of the test, okay? Uh, walking with plants, utopia of the sameness. Pre walking is an engagement with the natural world, meditation, motion, and emotion in a plenary botanical back background. Walking with plants is a utopic promenadography subtle calli calligraphic traces of the vegetal order in the awareness uh, of the landscape. We plant our steps as roots, seeding paths to elevate our minds and soul to the sky. Like plants, the walk is a production of the earth and of the light. Wherever we walk, plants are the most exuberant form of biomass and the generous matrix of the being on the planet earth. Plant escape enables creative and visionary footsteps, a phenomenological ar um, architecture built with a raw material of plants and human gestures of walking, sensorial des disorganization of the space by a superposition between human kinetics and illusionary static movement of the plant. Our act of walking with plants is a phyto-democracy manifesto. The free strolling into a non-human order of the being, the world of the plants, is based on two hermeneutics perspectives, Spaziergang Wissenschaft, or Strollology, or Promenadology in English, and Critical Plant Studies. The term prom uh, Promenadology was introduced in the field of aesthetics and cultural stu cultural study by the Swiss uh, sociolo sociologist uh, Lucius Burkhardt in uh, um, in the 80 years, and uh, accepted in the official curriculum of the University of, from Germany and Austria as a tool uh, to explore our every, uh, everyday li uh, living environment, as well um, as for delivery of content, uh, of content and knowledge. Walking becomes an instrument to adjust and improve the urban life, but also to give an artistic dimension and social intervention. Between 2006 and 2007, Bertrand Weiser uh, pursued uh, this scientific and aesthetic perspective at the University of Leipzig. In 2007, Klaus Schaffer 
inaugurated at the University of Bremen the seminar on food, an investigation of the urban landscape as a mental construction uh, through intentional awareness of uh, body senses. This uh, multimodal scientific and artistic approach of walking permits a broad participation for general improvement of the life on the planet. Walking implies all kinds of conscious um, association as an active agent of cohesion, where otherness, otherness dissolute in sameness, universal flow of the life. Thus, walking with plants is an extravagant and enigmatic emancipation of the life, a seduction to bring the sameness in the quotidian experience of the stepping. An interface between anthropos and phyto could be an act of ampl amplified awareness through an aesthetic vagrancy. We become plants by a phyto stylization of the pedestrian movement, by archiving the sensorial waves of the vegetation in our feet, by enhancing the pulse of the light in our green evolution. As the poet William Blake say, uh, and all these vegetables all appear on my left foot as a bright sandal for, form um, of immortal of precious stones and gold. I stop down bound in the, bounded on the walk far, far forward through eternity. Between the freedom of the feet and the coercive, coercive static roots, there is an invisible bridge of the becoming, the walk and its sensorial protuberances, between nomadic and sedentary appearance of the life, alternating elevation of growth and plain perspective of stepping. Working with plants is a circumambulation following a sacred path of sameness with, which leads to an incognita terra to utopia, an infinite dimension of the awareness. In this pilgrimage in, the, pilgrimage in the vegetal order of the being, Homo politicus is enriched, enriched with an ecological depth and its infinite uh, possibility of growing as a plant. Food becomes the voice of the ground and its inhabitants, the vegetal surroundings, and translates a sublime phytokinesthesia of meditation. This non-hermeneutical approach of the vegetal left the freedom of the human to unfold creative stepping into the otherness and reach to uh, and reach the uh, the oneness with the nature. An emergent interdisciplinary science, critical plant studies approaches plants as equal participant of the life democracy. The, philosoph the philosopher Michael uh, Marder wrote in 2013 the book Plant Thinking, a philosophy of vegetal life where uh, he enhancing uh, this grafting between flora and human through the act of walking. The human body and subjectivity alike are not pure expression of spirit, but stranger, strange archives, pure faces of inscription of the vestiges of the inorganic world, of plant growth and of animality, all of uh, which survive and lead a clandestine afterlife in us as us. Just as well, past and present human intention and projections are caught up in the fabric of plant existence, reflecting histories of crossbreeding, grafting, agriculture technologies, aesthetic representations of the flora. Vegetable phenomenology supplies plant thinking with a normative ideal, the ideal we might approximate but never reach, unable, as it were, to put ourselves entirely in the plants shoes or rather roots. A symbiotic act between human walking and plant growing de develop a ecology of the elevation from homo erectus to humus erectus. Humus in Latin means soil. Uh, listen and speak to, uh, with the feet could be a channel of flowing information uh, between humans and plants. Uh, I quote Toro uh, from his uh, uh, text uh, Walking. What is, what is that makes it so hard sometimes to determine whatever we will walk? I believe that there is a subtle magnetism nature which, if we unconsciously yield to it, will direct us right. Um, end of the quoting. Walking with plants is not a political food, not about uh, otherness but an utopic artistic encounter between entities of the sameness, plant and human. Being a part of the whole, 
different frequency, uh, frequencies of the same wave and Im uh, an imaginary walk between human and plants become utopia where there is no ontolog ontological distance. We break the illusion of segregation by pr printing steps in the field of the plants and transfer human impression of our movements by receiving the expressiveness of the plants. We establish so by this promenadography a sensorial semiotic which permits to plants and human to recognize each other as protagonists of the sameness. By norm, um, residual communication between plants and human is transformed by walking into a euphoric fusion beyond the kinesis expression and its somatic uh, panoplies. Thus, walking with plants confirm maps of the sa sameness awareness beyond places and topic fields, an utopia of the being. And emancipatory logic of emotion, which rediscovers the connection between human and plants through a perambulation floor of common sensoriality, is the aim of this multimodal, multimodal walking. Walking with plants is an utopia of the human body to capture the botanical ontology as the unique salvation of the common destiny of our intermittent existence. Walking with the roots of the plants enhances, enhances our deeper perception about being a part of the planet and inscribes our universal ex existence into um, an equanimity equation or its higher expression of the sameness. Thus, we contextualize our approach, uh, our approach in plant, Plantionosen, term inspired by the philosoph, um, philosoph, uh, philosophy of Natasha Myers. Um, I quote Natasha, what I want to see uh, taking root in the ruins of the Anthropocene uh, thinking is what I half cheekily and half seriously want to call the Plantropocene. This is an, an um, aspirational episteme and way of doing life in which people come to recognize their profound interimplication with plants. Uh, so she substituted the, the term of uh, Anthropocene with plantro, Plantropocene, but I don't know why this term is uh, not famous, yes, because I, I feel it's more, um, uh, how to say, more inspired for our uh, new reality. Um, the, the name of the article of Natasha is the Designing Gardens for, uh, for Plants and People in Involution in 2017. Uh, walking with plants becomes epic of the green and poetry of the food, a visionary repub republic of the, sameness, of the sameness of nature, unfolded utopia in our consciousness, manifesto of self-realization as a liminal person. If you already, um, I quote again uh, Toro from walking, if you are ready to, uh, if you are ready to leave father and mother and brother and sister, and wife and child and friends, and never see them again if you have um, paid your debts and made your will and settled all your affairs and are a free uh, and uh, are a free a free man, then you are ready for a walk. Um, walking with plants it's, uh, is, um, is itself a creation act of common waves, patterns and paths and finding biotic communities by disrupting, uh, by disrupting fake ontological hierarchy. Our steps open plants eye if view, which contemplate us which, with subtle uh, vegetal sensitivity. Patterns of sauntering in nature become green kima. Kima in Greek means wave and enables to heal our perspective about otherness in, a, in order to consecrate, uh, consecrate it as sameness. Green Kima celebrates the revelation and the elevation of the working as an act which could rescue the human from uh, his uh, civilizational solitude, a movement of co-creation co with the plants, a sentient ecology in terms of uh, thing uh, world who said another word for this kind of sensitivity and response, response responsiveness is intuition thank you for this rich a very poetic view on um, um, walking and immersion in uh, in nature
um, I think I think we can fill a whole year of cafes with with uh, the ideas and topics that you have reached to us. Uh, they are wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll open the floor. Um, if anybody has a uh, question, remark, feedback, uh, wants to share something about their own practice that uh, is relating to the ideas that Simona is sharing with us. I think that's really interesting what you're saying, Simona. Um, because for for me, um, I spend a lot of time in the nature. I'm I'm not a city person, so I'm not walking on paths or concrete or anything. And I'm always very aware of what I'm actually the material that I am engaged with through my feet, and that will actually vary quite a lot. Um, for me, depending on the height that I'm gaining or losing. Hmm. Okay. Have you have you given any thought to that? To sort of the the um uh the 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 plant growth level. Um yeah. Alison Lloyd, who's another artist, was on a panel the recently and she was mm -hmm. talking about the work that she does with contours. So she walks one height all the way around a mountain or all the way around a field and of course mm -hmm. i was thinking about that right well, i hadn't thought about what you had said but i was thinking about it just now as being in that one particular height the plant um growth will be probably the same i mean not quite because it's depending on if it's north facing or south facing or depending where you are in the world or west or east but the plant species will probably be much the same whereas if you start go, uh, start going to altitude or going into a valley or to sea level th those plant species change quite dramatically yeah i i think it's um, uh, about uh, um, the awareness that um, uh, it's better to um, to grow as a uh, in a rhythm of the co-evolution than uh, in our perspective of uh, competition. I think this is my point of view also when I speak about utopia, utopia of the sameness. Um, because you spoke about the physical, um, how does, uh, a phenomenological aspect of the growing. You can see, you can see that uh, they share the, um, the sun and the water and everything uh, um, to the same level to the same size uh, um, and still they have enough they don't um, uh, they don't uh, compete for the resources uh, mm. it's like um, uh, the the fact that they just uh, grow with uh, water and uh, light and uh, minerals um, gave them uh, more awareness and more um, how to say, uh, delightful uh, um, evolution. They are, they are um, gracious. Uh, I mean, uh, w even when they uh, they grow, even if they uh, have, um, how to say, um, limited resources, they, this is not for their awareness. They have another uh, point of view. And, um, my uh, perspective is not to see the the plants with our um, how to say with our uh, ideology human ideology that's why the uh, critical plant studies uh, proposes um, um plant uh, plant view the plant view uh, we can't we can't imagine how can we escape from our mind and to go in the field of the thinking of the plants but um, because of this, I quote um, uh, Toro and I said, I said, um, through walking, we can uh, feel a subtle magnetism. magnetism. We don't um, uh, share ideas, but we share waves. Okay. And, uh, so, yeah, uh, uh, that's really interesting because um, I, I've just seen Sue just arrived. Hi, Sue. Um, Sue Thomas. Uh, and um, with her. Uh, event um she introduced uh, ruth irwin and uh, this is from the southern part of the world australia and new zealand um not you not the babak southern part of the world but the other side of the world and um 
uh, Ruth was saying that, you know, in as part of the Australasia thinking, um, everything is related and they have a word for that, which is a really lovely word called wakapa. Is that right, Sue? Oh, you have, you've, you've got your microphone um, on. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure that was the right pronunciation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So um, anyway, I'll just leave it like that. So that sort of fits in with what you're saying, that everything that we are in nature, we're related anyway. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's uh, very interesting when uh, we speak about ho Homo er erectus and humus. Because in fact, mm. human and yeah. humus is the, we share the same ground also. So uh, mm. when we walk, we plant our uh, feet uh, on the same field of plant growing, uh, yeah, uh, substance. <laughs> so we we, and we uh, all end become, up there. Uh, yeah, and yeah, we yeah, eventually course, become yeah, the humus. Careful. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Catherine, do you, do you want to say something about your um, uh, impressions? The use of the word emancipation really interested me. Um, I always feel uh, a real sense of connection and freedom when I'm walking uh, through woodland particularly. Um, and it was interesting to hear the comment about the plant heights as well. Um, so I suppose when you talk about plants, Simona, are you talking about trees as well or just specifically plants? And when you talk about emancipation, would you say that you feel a real um, freedom when you're working, um, when you're walking through the plantation? And could you describe what type of plants you are talking about as well? Sorry, yeah, that's quite a few yeah, questions all in one. <laughs> it's a very good question, yeah, because uh, when I speak about plants, uh, um, I skip the agriculture. So I, I uh, just refer to the wild plants. That, uh, um, it's a manifest of the plants, the way they are. They are wild. They, are, um, uh, they have their own order. And that's why I spoke about uh, emancipation, because... Um, if we um, learn from the from the inner world of the of the plants, we don't see um, uh, how to say um, chaos. We see wilderness, and uh, uh, this is uh, the life itself. Uh, so of course, I speak about trees. I speak about uh, even about um, yeah, small plants, uh, mushrooms, everything, everything which is uh, vegetal. Uh, vegetal. And um, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I didn't mention in this uh, text, but um, uh, this is very important because um, in Switzerland in 2008, I think, uh, they decided in Parliament that um, the plants also have the right, uh, as rights, as the human rights, they, are, have, they have also the rights of, um, ethic, of ethics. So they, they have rights to live, they have rights to be wild, to grow, to, um, to explore their life uh, the way they understand, not the way we understand for our um, uh, raw uh, meanings, because we use uh, plants as a uh, substance for our uh, growing and our uh, emancipation, which is not, <laughs> we are not so independent, we are uh, still um, very, uh, how to say, dependent on plants. Uh, so we don't have to make hierarchy between plants, human, no. animals. Yeah, Simple this is my... Uh, yeah. yeah, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simone. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, I have a question um, that is, of course, related, but not maybe directly related. Um, uh, I think we're all uh, in the, the room uh, here, sort of like on board that um, um, we as a society need to be more in touch with uh, nature. Um, we uh, are all uh, too often on our devices, um, uh, distanced from um, uh, the natural world around us, uh, which I suppose is exemplified by uh, this being one of our more popular uh, um, talks. Um, so my question uh, is, uh, 
directed at not particularly directed at Simona, but at anyone who might have a good idea on this, uh, is um, how would it be possible for us or for society? That's a big word, but uh, for our for civilization, uh, for our educational system, to shift a focus more to the um, appreciation and inclusion of the natural in uh, our daily lives. I think we have to learn from uh, Amazonia <laughs> because they always trust the, the way of the nature and uh, they are a part of the nature. They don't um, invite the nature as a guest uh, in their life. Uh, we have a very, yeah, we have a very superior point of view. So we give place to the nature in our life, but we are just a small and tiny species. And uh, uh, of course we have uh, our intelligence, but this is not more than a plant of intelligence. And this is my point of view also that we have to get back to the nature with a um, humble attitude and uh, to contemplate and, uh, uh, and to learn from nature. Uh, we, uh, with the same, um, how to say, uh, attitude of the nature, with, um, with trust, um, nature trust, uh, uh, the plenitude yeah, I agree. of life. But what you're yeah. describing is um, uh, the change that needs to be instilled or how we need, need to change. But my question is not, what do we need to become? My question is, how do we get there? How do we convince others to get there? Jazz has an answer, I think. Well, I don't have an answer, yeah. but I have a um, uh, a continued thought of that, Babette. I mean, the first thing to me is we have to stop consuming in the way that we are. Uh, that That's really the basic thing, you know, because <laughs> at the moment, consumption creates the situation that we're in so we as humans see everything as as an opportunity to make something else out of it um this is a very good point that you're making um uh, of course we just went well just i think it's already a month ago uh we crossed um what's the word for this the point where we use up all the resources as uh, the world uh, for mm. a year in a year, but we do yeah. it in like five and a half months. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that is, of course, not sustainable. Uh, it obviously is not sustainable. So what you're saying is that if we would consume less, we would appreciate nature more because we have to consume less for us to be sustainable. Uh, and that would automatically roll over into a, a stronger appreciation for nature. Am I paraphrasing you correctly, Jess? Yeah, absolutely. No, I totally agree. And then it, it's 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 not going back that far to actually, as as Simone is saying, as the Amazons, but you know the, the Amazonia. But there are there are lots of people within the world who still have dirty fingernails. You know, who are still in touch with that um, more simple economy. Um, yeah, local, and, uh, local production, yeah. yeah, yeah we can I mean, that's the first with the schools, yeah. of, uh, with the schools yeah. for example. The school is too much human ideology. Uh, half mm. of the school must be uh, in contact with the nature. They have to produce their own uh, tools to write, their own... Uh, mm. I don't know, they don't... They, the people don't have the awareness of how precious is a uh, book uh, because it's made of trees or... They, they are disconnected because of the um, mm. industrialization. They think the meat is just meat and uh, mm. uh, they are not aware that you have to go to cut the, yeah, the, mm. the animal. Or I think this is the problem I'm... that we are disconnected. And the first, the first step is to walk, I think. This is the, the most mm. subtle. We don't have to, mm. to extract too much, um, how to say, um, uh to ask too much to the people they just have to walk to observe it's like quantic mm. physics to observe and then when you observe you transform yourself also and after we have to also to to uh, uh oblige uh, but with pleasure of course not uh, 
forcing people to to go back to to use the body in in a, in dialogue with the nature to extract things from the nature in a in a very subtle way not uh, killing the nature but making a a dialogue with the nature and uh, learning from the nature i think it's from the uh, we have to begin to, we have to start from zero from the schools from the <laughs> first years of the yeah from the type of uh, uh, urban spaces from the architectures from yeah it's a new uh, page of the humanity we, uh, i was hoping for an easier the... solution than uh, starting all over simona <laughs> 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 um but i, I totally appreciate your point um uh, we have to change uh, many more things than just focusing on uh, um consumption but what I think is uh, the beauty of um, Jazz's suggestion is that it is very relatable. Uh, we all, no one does not understand that we consume too much. It's, it's very obvious. You don't have to explain this to people, right? Uh, so putting more of a focus on uh, this overconsumption um, makes it easier to fight it as well without requiring uh, to overhaul an educational system and without requiring to overhaul an educational system in every single country in the world, right? Although that would be better, but hey, well, you know, um, it's uh, you, you brought up the world, ut word utopian a few times, and that, although a, a great ideal is also a little bit challenged or challenging. Um, well, anyway, thanks. <laughs> could could, could I say a, a word here about um, the whole act of being out in nature? I I see that a lot of people are not confident in nature. The idea of actually walking barefoot, for example, in nature in grass is scary. Um, I I sometimes do feel that um, TV programs on nature and this kind of thing they rather sentimentalise it. It's all lovely and wonderful, and it's all good for us. But quite often it's not so good for us because we can get stung and pricked by thistles and all kinds of things that um, people are afraid of and children are afraid of. Um, so we always talk about biophilia, but there's also biophobia. And I certainly know a lot of kids and adults who don't know anything about nature and they're afraid. Um, because it's a very going out into wild nature is a very foreign place to them. And so they don't find it beautiful and entrancing. They find it scary. And maybe that's one aspect that we need to be open and honest about and address it. Um, for example, in my local Facebook group at this time of year, everybody's freaking out about having spiders in their house. And how do I kill these spiders? How do I get rid of these scary spiders? You know, there, there is an urban fear of nature that needs to be addressed and they need to be helped with that before they can appreciate the beauty side yeah it's about this phobia of, uh, of the nature it, i think this is our um, infrastructures of our um, politics <laughs> yeah we um, they extracted uh, yeah the political field they extracted their ideology based on phobia because otherwise uh, it was impossible to build uh, uh, this uh, system of uh, human system separated from nature. So uh, I think uh, this is the first enemy to kill the nature, <laughs> because mm. otherwise uh, we uh, we feel uh, integrated and we don't uh, have to fight against something different, which is not different. <laughs> you understand? It's but, like. But, but, um, but we had to fight nature to survive in the first place, you know. Yeah, because that, they, that. they imagine nature as a, um, uh, something like uh, uh, the enemy of uh, civilization, and this is not true. They, uh, yeah, it's, we fought, we fought the na against the nature to erase from the ground of the yeah our human civilization. So if we are not uh, outside of the nature. We don't have enemy anymore. <laughs> so, uh, which is the which is the pur purpose to fight? They don't. We have to live in um, bipolarity. <laughs> yeah. To... Yeah. 
I agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, isn't this also the sphere not born out of um, the lack of being able to control what is uh, wild? And nature by design is wild, right? And we cannot control uh, what happens um, in nature in the same way that um, um, in a, in a um, developed, no, that's not maybe the right word, but let's say developed uh, society, um, the the middle classes want more and more rules to be able to control their environment so that there is less and less of a risk of something happening that cannot be controlled. Um, so we end up uh, in a situation as a society where everything is uh, arranged and organized and um, uh, put in uh, put in boxes, uh, which is the opposite of how nature by design works, because there are no rules in nature. So um, that, uh, that fear that we have as individuals is, um, uh, instilled by the very unpredictability of um, nature. And it's not going to become less, it's only going to become more because we are less and less secure as individuals because we are being more and more manipulated by the political upper class um, and the, the capitalist upper class. Anyway, that's, now I'll stop this. <laughs> it's like a capsule. Uh, we live in the capsules, but now we, because of this, uh... A fear of ne nano, yeah, nano virality and all these stuff of uh, invisible, in invisible uh, uh, enemy. Uh, our capsule becomes uh, <laughs> less and less uh, comfortable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we are afraid about life, not just about nature. <laughs> Everything is. Uh, th this is the paradox. We are afraid about the life but we want to keep our life this is not normal how to keep the life if we are afraid about the life yeah i think this pandemic you know that we experienced very recently is the uh, is the best example no that uh, what uh, babak just said that we want to control if we look at virus what is part of nature you know that came maybe I don't know what is the real reason, but maybe just to diminish uh, number of human population, which is overrepresented species in our planet at the moment, no? And then we see also, yeah, what measures of control have been put in place to fight. And yeah, like Macron in France or some other politicians, they openly declared war with the virus, no? And I think after this pandemic, we can hardly imagine, yeah, how we get, you know, to embrace nature when we put in complete opposition. So I think we are very willing to take beautiful sides of nature, but as Babak mentioned, we don't want to, to take all these risks. There, of course, there are plenty of diseases, no, like uh, vector-borne diseases, uh, like uh, malaria and Lyme disease, uh, I think maybe most of people who are this evening, we, we are in quite safe nature because biodiversity is so destroyed in Europe and in Western world, no? But if we look into Africa, nature environment still is uh, much more dangerous than in strongly urbanized countries. So, of course, it's about control and about risks that are coming from nature, too. I think like Toro, no, in his writings, it's a romanticized picture of nature. And I think now also in media, there's very much this romantic approach to, in Instagram, you know, how beautiful and peaceful nature is, but it can be very violent. And with climate change, we see, we see how violent nature can be with floods, you know, that with very strong winds that destroy all human settlements. So it's, uh, yeah, it depends a little bit which, uh, from which corner we look at the nature and what we define as nature too, what is definition of nature? Are we part of nature or are we superiors to nature? I think it's very huge philosophical discussion. We escape through plants or uh, we want to run away from the plants? <laughs> this is the question. 
because we, if we consider ourselves uh, as a superior, we have to kill the plants and to replace them with the, I don't know what kind of uh, new, uh, yeah, new type of uh, foods or <laughs> who, who knows in the future. But if we consider ourselves uh, life, the way the plants are grounding uh, the, on the same soil of the life, then we have to escape in the field of the plants. So we have to learn from the plants and to uh, to grow as a plants in peace, in harmony, and without competition. That's why I, pro I propose the uh, the walking as a peaceful tool of approaching this uh, ontology of the plants. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very, how to say, famous uh, tool to share the peace in the world as Jesus or as uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi. A lot of people walk to, to explore uh, the peace in, in, and the harmony in the world. But if we could do uh, with awareness now with our tools of digital tools of uh, our um, civil, uh, civil good civilization as uh, parts of the, our civilization that i think we can uh, extract um, a good philosophy uh, of the plants for our uh, uh, probably new future this is a uh, that's why i told you Let's discuss uh, the term plant escape <laughs> because everybody can uh, understand something else. I let it open for discussion uh, through walking to yeah, to get to get uh, back a little bit to the main topic, which is walking and plants. Also, we have to uh, articulate both. And now, Richard, uh, I've seen that you some time ago in this um, uh, developing. Um, conversation, you had um, a remark, a question uh, about the Tim Ingold reference. I don't know if you still want to bring this in or if you have another um, the, uh, another idea uh, to share as well related with your walking practice. Uh, um, yeah, well, it's. I think that the, the conversation has kind of moved on in the way that uh, I was interested to kind of pursue. Um, what I wanted to kind of pick up, though, which is much more recent in the conversation, is uh, the, the points that is it? Vit I can't see your name any longer. Vitalia was raising just now, um, uh, so kind of querying, questioning um, uh, the romanticism uh, that that is around that kind of human version of of nature. And so, what I'd put in, I suppose, it's a kind of a point or a thought of provocation, is that. You know that the, the that romanticising of uh, of of plant beauty and all that kind of Instagram stuff um, is as much an othering as the construction of of plants as as dangerous as as nature as violent, um, and I, it, it's that's why I was interested in that in in that Tim Ingold um, idea of um, of sentient ecology um, of 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 trying to, you know, what is what is the, the 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 sort of the thought process that we need to kind of collectively work through um, that doesn't have that that you know it's get, getting to I, I suppose I was traveling having trouble with um, with what Simone was talking about getting to sameness um, and maybe uh, you can say a bit more about that and the the concern for me is that you know we are seriously in an ecological crisis right now. Where I used to live, I was visiting down on the coast um, at, at the weekend, huge chunks of the cliffs are just falling away. Um, the, you know, you can you can see that those changes taking place, never mind in the trees and the plants, but actually in the, the kind of the material, the physical, the, the stone, the, the, the rocks on, on which we walk. Um, and at the, the the change, yes, it's great to have a kind of utopian ambition, but the change we have to be constructing and enabling and facilitating needs to be happening right now. And how do we do it without getting caught up in that romanticism? So it's like I echo Vitalia's point, 
but how do we kind of get past that um, in in order for people to um, uh, move towards that kind of notion of sameness rather than it being other? Uh, my point of view is that uh, artists um, can have a big a big impact on uh, on the perspective uh, about plants. They can uh, extract uh, this philosophy of plants and expose to the humanity in a very um, uh, in a very beautiful way. We have to to contemplate the nature the nature through the um, not just uh, yeah uh, just walking and uh, contemplating with our eyes, but also extracting the best from the human field through the artist. And uh, yeah, I had to expose uh, in a very, very beautiful way the, the nature. <laughs> it's like uh, a second wave of romanticism, but uh, taking um, the side of technology, we can share it uh, in a in a very easy way, and to uh, how to say to make exponential this uh, evolution of the uh, human awareness regarding the regarding the solution of the nature for the humanity. So I think that it's, it's a, again another dialogue between um, nature, between, uh, yeah, sciences, the sciences can give the, the meaning and the solution, uh, scientific solution of the plants to the artist and the artist can communicate with the, the other part of the humanity. Uh, not just education. Education is just, uh, how to say, like uh, usually not always the happiest uh, moment of the life of the people, unfortunately. Uh, so we, we have to become more uh, seductive, so more, uh, yeah, to seduce uh, the mind of the people, um, presenting in a beautiful way the nature, like walking, for example. <laughs> And, uh, if I may, uh, to, uh, Fred or Steph, um, if you are uh, around, um, actually your work um, is very much adding to this. Uh, at one side, you are uh, exploring uh, the very the ancient uh, traditions of storytelling and um, uh, engaging with nature. At the other side, you combine this with very new technological. Um, the, the developments and as well with the new um, era we live in, which is a digital virtual uh, era. Um, could you elaborate a bit on how you see these two worlds uh, come together? I believe that uh, what we have to do uh, is uh, listen uh, to nature and spend time in nature. And uh, also this idea that uh, today uh, we we have to have a certain distance between each other. Uh, it's, a, it's a great moment, uh, a great opportunity to start to listen to other languages and other animals and be aware of, of the interrelations between plants and animals and insects. And just spending time uh, in nature is a way to break the fear uh, because the fear is about uh, not knowing what will happen. And, and when we spend time in observ observation, then uh, the fear will go away. But because nature also can bite, of course, if, if we bite it. Uh, so I think that the, the key is not to think so much with our head, but just opening our sensing and spending, spending as much time as we can in nature, and if possible, at the same place, to start to enter into the intim intimacy of the relationship uh, between uh, the different uh, intelligence uh, life forms uh, in, in the place. That's like a, a really an ecosystem, um, a, a communication, a very complex uh, communication. And it's true that we use uh, technology uh, as a way uh, not to um, uh, put a layer of, of digital information of, on top of the place but more as a key to open uh, a window to a place, to get to a place, uh, get uh, some uh, digital information, yes, but after that you put your mobile in your pocket 
uh, and you do, uh, for example, a deep, deep listening, for example. Thank you, Fred. Uh, now, um, I see uh, a question of Catherine. I don't know if it is uh, for Simona or for somebody else, but um, I'll uh, read it and maybe uh, Catherine, I can give the word to you. Uh, Catherine is asking, when you imagine yourself in your work, how do you record your thoughts? Um, um, do, you, do your memories inform to present moment in time? Um, Caroline, was this a question to Simona or to somebody else? Please? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes please. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I walk, um, I don't want to um, to transform my mind in an archive. In an archive, I I would like to become a flow. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. it's not so important to to keep uh, and to extract something from my experience. I want to become experience. <laughs> and and uh, this is my point of view also when I speak about plant escape. I want to become plants when I, I want to, to see the nature from inside of the nature, not from an exterior point of view. So this is my answer. So you become part of the plant. And you don't. Yeah, yeah. So you, you uh, don't. You don't actually record any of your walks, or you just have them in so as thoughts or, and memories. Yeah, I uh, don't uh, record. No, no. It's. Uh, no. I don't even uh, have a plan when I become. I don't even no. imagine that I begin to work. Uh, to walk. Uh, suddenly, I have uh, like a calling, and I start to walk. Uh, even here uh, in the city, I know very good the city, but still I feel something uh, like uh, 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 parts without, um, yeah, without uh, my uh, energy. So I have to go there to, uh, to make a exchange between me and the places, and uh, it's like um, it's like I want to cover uh, all the places uh, uh, with my. Um, how to say with with my way of experiencing the world <laughs> it's okay. nothing to extract it's to exchange okay yeah and, uh, okay the mind is not important at all i skip the mind it, i let the ah. places to to guide me like this it's a very so just how to say yeah it's not at all inter intellectual uh, discovering mm. of uh, of the nature on the contrary mm. i want to become humble <laughs> To yeah. to make uh, yeah to experience uh, to change myself uh, with the, each um, uh, yeah with each, each uh, exchange uh, that I have uh, with the places with the nature with the experience itself yeah okay thank you thank you. Yes. Coming back to this interesting uh, topic about how the, let's say, the more romantic or even the ancient um, and uh, the, let's say this new time comes together, actually, I don't think there's so much difference between uh, what happened in the 19th century and now. And there seems to be a sort of uh, evolu uh, evolution and continuity in the way the, uh, the society has developed, although we have now uh, a new technology, we live in a virtual dig digital world. Um, the, but um, but um, Faye, may I ask you something about your work? Um, because you actually are digging into the past and connecting this with our, um, our world and our way of living. Um, that um, how this aspect of, uh, as Simona said, uh, walking is the first step to a global change, and uh, um, how this applies, how this does this apply in in your uh, in your work, in your practice? Um, Simona, thank you for your presentation. It was absolutely fantastic, and um, I really enjoyed uh, hearing um, the intellectual context of your work. Um, and the theoretical standpoints of your work. Um, as a theoretician myself, I, I really align myself to, to how you're approaching what you're, um, what you're doing. So I am an archaeologist, and I, I, um, 
I, I work with landscapes and I, I excavate sites and and I would say as a as a as a lens or as a as a as an approach to my work I, I excavate <laughs> um, probably says quite a bit about who I am as a, in myself maybe um, but I excavate sites I um, excavate um, through drawing I'm curatorially I it's all a process of excavation um, and I see walking as as part of that excavation process. Um, so actually, um, Richard White, it's very nice to see you. Richard White and I have done some walking um, together, um, having come from the same um, area and um, Richard's projects that he does with his his wife and um, and others are really extraordinarily beautiful projects, very thoughtful. Rebecca Solnit, as, um, in her book Wonderlust, says, well, walking is how the body measures itself against the earth. And I find that a really um, uh, profound and very useful quote to use when we come to thinking about our human relationship to the non-human world and how we as human beings in our relationship for me, as an as an archaeologist, it's uh, like a relationship to soil. Yeah? When I'm excavating a site, I have this intensely intimate relationship with soil. I can hear it. I can see the colours. Um, I can tell the layers as I'm peeling those off. And at times, uh, in some of the sites that I've worked on, uh, that focus of work and that and that intention of practice of of the craft and the science of, of excavating having a trowel in your hand and in a hole in the ground uh, uh, almost an unawareness of myself as human as I'm recording and peeling back these um, beautiful uh, gritty soily um, textures and I wonder, as I specialize in phenomenology, so you, you, we can't step away from our humanness and we can't deny our humanness. Um, and sometimes I think we can be rather too critical of our humanness when we think about our engagement with, with our, our, our natural world, our plant world, as the, as the focus of this, this talk is. So perhaps we can start to develop conversations about how we align ourselves with this world or how we can develop new relationships and, and open up new conversations. And I, I can tell from my work, Simona, that this is all happening and it's it's a real joy to um, hear. So I wondered if, the, if there was a question, Simona, was whether there is a conversational element to your research with regards to your approach to your walking and um, botanical um, data or botanical world. Yeah, um, I'm very happy that you spoke about uh, soil uh, because um, this is, uh, I think, the main point point of uh, my conversation of uh, uh, with the plants uh, because uh, the way we the way we walk. Uh, decide the way we talk with the plants. Um, uh, I'm not uh, the first one to speak, speak about this. Uh, almost the Buddhist and the Taoism uh, has uh, uh, ha have this um, approach of walking with uh, sensitivity and openness um, uh, for the soil as a living. Uh, it, it's alive, of course. It's full of <laughs> um, it's uh, full of microorganisms and uh, uh, it's uh, we don't have this uh, perspective but uh, uh, I think the way we uh, approach the soil the soil the um, the vibration of our steps uh, um, the awareness that we put on the plants of our feet is the connection with the with the plants and uh, the feet are, um, how to say, uh, um, can be our score uh, to to compose the same uh, music uh, together with the plants. It's uh, 
it's about music it's not about dialogue in a mental way it's about vibration frequency and waves and um, this is our uh, how to say uh, universal um, universal uh, language uh, with all the universe not just with the plants i think uh, we have uh, to be aware that we share uh, the same wave it's one and uh, we have uh, our frequency as human plants have also another frequency but uh, the amplitude of the wave uh, doesn't make us to uh, to forget um, the the common ground that we have just one wave and the, the if we if we approach your um, uh, phenomenolo phenomenological um, 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 thinking, uh, it's, we can see it on the on the soil. Yeah, yeah. the the soil give uh, um, gives the the phenomenology of the plants because according to the type of the plants we have another color, another aspect, another uh, um, consistency of the soil. And also uh, our approaching of the soil uh, gives um, a possibility to, to communicate with, with the plants in a good way or in a fatal way for the plants. This, uh, this is uh, probably, this fatal way of approaching of the soil is very visible uh, with the agriculture, which uh, eradicated all the possibilities of the soil. <laughs> it's nothing, uh, uh, yeah, it's nothing uh, natural anymore with our soil today. Unfortunately, this is another problem. And uh, uh, if we have, if we um, win a more um, awareness about this way of uh, <clears throat> extracting um, extracting information and food and everything for our survival from the soil probably will also uh, um, find a way to to live uh, in a better dialogue with the nature so i think the soil is the, <clears throat> the key of uh, of our uh, uh, new approach of uh, of the of the plants in peaceful way of course uh, Rika, may uh, I come to you for a moment? As uh, the, the Greek. Hello. I, <laughs> uh, I, I remember that we were working together in, uh, in Prespes in this overwhelming landscape. And the first thing that actually um, occurred to me when I when I was in, in Prespes was this um, amazing silence or apparent silence, the, the absence of human sound, and to be lost in this. Uh, the sort of wilderness uh, that um, that took you over, and uh, the experience of exploring this together with, with with you and with other people that were gathering in Prespes to share their walking practices, and uh, also relating to your work, which is about uh, the relation with the um, with the Greek uh, um, the um, territory. Um, yeah. Yes. Mm. Well, um, thanks for this inspiring talk and I really enjoyed uh, listening to you Simona and uh, I love the way you read actually because I, I had the opportunity to think about it it was like a slow walk and I thought <laughs> that uh, although I do a lot of walking and hiking as an artist because I'm quite involved with the mountain areas and everything since the pandemic I had to go to my studio by walking and that was a new world actually because it was slow slow walk and not dangerous it's quite not a mountain area with a, not semi mountainous hill I would say but uh, not uh, like a real mountain where you have you're always on guard and everything and I was thinking a lot about the slow walk and my relation to the plants while you were talking all all this summer during all those months walking walking and walking to the studio and uh, actually talking to every small bush and things of this sometimes and uh, saying hello and and trying not to um 
uh, press <laughs> unnecessary creatures or plants and things. And actually, I I caught myself uh, two days ago because we had the first rain in this dry Kikladic island that I'm in now. Uh, since the pandemic, I haven't left the island. We had the first rain and then everything came back to life. And I started to be afraid if I will harm them during my walk every day. I, I, I have to stay in one track and keep it and try to make the minimum impact on the landscape. Um, and the slowness of these walks really um, changed a lot of things in the way I thought about walking as an artistic practice and it became more intense and more silent and to going back to what uh, Babak had asked um, before how can you um, convince others to come in, in touch with nature I was thinking uh, since the beginning of the pandemic that uh, it was of course an opportunity and maybe it's a romantic way of uh, seeing it to see things another way Actually, it's my, in my own uh, utopian hope that it might change the attitude of many people and go back to a slow way of doing things and uh, a more uh, a, a more uh, small scale. Because you, uh, the la lady that left before said something about the urban children that have uh, nothing to do with nature, no, nothing, no connection whatsoever. And uh, maybe um, small places uh, could be, are more appealing at the moment to a lot of people. Maybe we should rethink a lot of our, of our urban, uh, <laughs> how can I say, um, packing what? up in, uh, <laughs> in millions <laughs> and destroying everything uh, by doing so. Um, um, working with plants always, of course, and listening as much as we can to them, yes. I don't think, I don't really agree with Yang that we all look ourselves are plus nature, as it was said in the Middle Ages, man is placed on nature. Maybe slowly and with uh, small steps we can re uh, we can uh, remember how, that we are one actually yeah thank you it's uh, very important this aspect of um, uh, how uh, we can uh, plant again again nature in uh, urban spaces and I think there are a lot of projects about it now nowadays but um, it depends of the how to say uh, the, the education I think we have to get from uh, from the first step as the children must know know alphabet have also to to make them see not the, the read not just the text but also the nature it's uh we don't have too much these possibilities for our age to make uh, very radical changes but uh, we can at least uh, um, invite the new generation to have another approach but by doing not just uh, thinking or speaking just doing just uh, the, as our uh, grand um, uh, parents said uh, we have one duty in the life uh, is to plant a tree and to make a house in the <laughs> family or something like this. We forgot this aspect about to plant a tree. We just to make a house and uh, at least one children and that's it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> if we think deeply, um, when we uh, plant a, a, a child, it will be for probably maximum 100 year, years. But if we plant a tree, we uh, can, uh, how to say, we can um, keep our energy in that field of the tree for 500 years. years. Probably this is the, a practical way to do small things with big impacts. One small seed can 
give a forest in the awareness of the our children. I mean, once it's <laughs> it's enough. But phenomenological, uh, yeah, uh, uh, um, impact. Not just uh, speaking; it's doing. I think this is the the best because we extract a lot of pleasures, a lot of pleasure by doing things in nature. It's, it's nothing. Uh, like before that we had to go in the field uh, and to make agriculture and uh, it, we have a lot of technology now <laughs> and uh, to save uh, the best part of uh, of uh, the experience with the nature we don't have to repeat the 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 act of survival it's it's less uh, uh, real <laughs> than our uh, impact on the nature now i i hope <laughs> Now I see that Vitalia uh, was um, asking herself, Simona, if you have learned to walk or if you were born walking. <laughs> that was, yeah. uh, uh, no, I uh, till um, I didn't have awareness about the therapy of walking uh, till. Uh, I get bored because I was obsessed by being bored from my childhood. I was uh, uh, all the time alone, and uh, this uh, boredom of uh, the existence, this uh, how to say, uh, uh, yeah, lim uh, limited life, uh, that just living in the mind, in the mind, and in a house and stuff like this, gave me the pleasure to escape in the nature. So it was like. Um, um a solution uh, which came from from uh, from inside not from outside i didn't see the nature and i felt like an invitation uh it was like um uh inner solution it was i don't know it's uh, it's not a program in my life <laughs> it's uh part of uh, of my nature <laughs> So I be, I began very late uh, by walking uh, because um, I'm curious and I wanted to discover everything uh, in the city in the nature. Um, I didn't feel comfortable to skip uh, details uh, by using uh, cars uh, or it was like this. It was uh, I wanted to feel uh, every detail and to not just to contemplate but also to feel to smell to extract the experience from. Uh, each uh, part of the planet. <laughs> Plan, yeah, not all the planet, but <laughs> I try to to discover more and more <laughs> before I die. Yes. So it was not a program. It was not a program. It's, it's another intellectual process, not a program. Mm -hmm. And uh, Vitaly had another uh, uh, question, which would be a nice. Uh, could be a nice last question, except if you would like to add something, uh, the others that are here. Um, how do you support people? How do we support people who wish to walk with plants but do not know where to start? How would you get people start walking yeah, with plants? Uh, I, uh, I invite them first to. Uh, to see all the surroundings doesn't matter if they live in the middle of a uh, yeah, big city, industrial city, or something. They have to to um, begin uh, to observe even a yeah a tiny plant uh, in uh, in the asphalt. Or then we have to to dare to look in the horizon but first we have to see our the surroundings of our feet we have to be humble and then uh, to explore the world in in uh, yeah in uh, big size <laughs> of the screen <laughs> i mean uh, we have to be humble and to see the feet and to explore the um, the ground and uh, the wo the world that we share with the plants with the feet then with the mind not with the big project, but uh, with the um, uh, nice uh, um, and uh, humble sensitivity, sensitivity of our feet and of our senses in general, all the senses, <laughs> to become alive uh, during this experience. And this is the most important. 
What I uh, remember from this talk is that we go with small steps towards a change. Uh, then I'll get to thank you uh, all and to thank above all uh, Simona for this very thought provoking talk. And uh, so thank we hope to see you again. <laughs> yes. And uh, thank you, Andrew and um, Babak, uh, likewise, for this uh, uh, very uh, intense and beautiful collaboration. Uh, and you all for being here. So, till we walk again. <laughs>